Hey guys, my name is Bill Ferriter and it's time for another 10 minute team tip. In this team tip, I wanted to tell you a little bit about a tiered task card, which was one of my very favorite activities to use in class. Now, my collaborative team made the tiered task card that you see on your screen. And we would make one tiered task card per unit of study. And we used it in our classroom as what we called a turn to task. It was something that students would turn to when they finished any of the work that we happened to be working on together in class. So you know that student who you pass out a, an assignment to them and they're done in three and a half minutes and they say, what do I do now? In our classroom, the answer was pull out your tiered task card. You're going to work on one of the activities that's there. Or you know that student that finishes the assessment that you handed out to them really quickly and they have nothing to do for the rest of the class period because they're done with the test, but everyone else is still working. In our classrooms, students would turn to their tiered task card. It's what they would take out and continue to work on. Now, a tiered task card has a couple of essential parts. First of all, your tiered task card should always be connected to the essential outcomes that you're currently working on. Why? Because if students have additional time in class, don't you want them to be exploring your essential at a deeper level? That's a mistake that we oftentimes make in schools. Students finish their work early and then we say to them, hey, do you have a book to read? Or do you have anything that you can complete for another class? That's wasted instructional time. What we really want is for students to dive deeper into our essential outcomes. So as you develop a tiered task card, make sure it's connected to your essentials. Then our tiered task cards always pointed our students to an external source of information that was connected to the essential that we were studying. In my classroom, oftentimes those external sources to explore were current events. Why? Well, because in science, there's lots of current events that are connected to our curriculum, and kids are really motivated to study current events. They like seeing our content in the real world. But that doesn't have to be a current event. It just has to be an external source of information that you know students are going to be interested in exploring. I'll give you some examples. I have a friend who is really into the Horrible Histories videos. He uses them with his students all the time and they're super engaged by them. So this could be a link to a Horrible Histories video that's connected to the essential that he's teaching at this particular time. Really, it could be a link to any YouTube video that you know that your students will like exploring. Maybe this is a link to a web quest that you know that kids are engaged by, or maybe you have a simulation website that you really like to use with kids. As long as the external content is something that's motivating to kids and connected to your essential, it works. The bottom of the document is where the magic happens, though. This is where students are going to find tasks to explore or to complete that are connected to that external source of content for them to explore. And at the bottom of the doc, you'll notice that the tasks are leveled by DOK. DOK stands for depth of knowledge. If you're not sure what that means, it's a way to increase the cognitive complexity of a task. So the task on the far left hand side, this recall and reproduction task, it's the lowest level of cognitive complexity. And the task over here on the right hand side, that's the highest level of cognitive complexity for an individual task. Now, when we're asking students to work on their tiered task card, we ask them to start from the left and work to the right on the tiered task card. That's not philosophically perfect. Philosophical perfection would be looking at an individual student in that moment where they say, I'm done, what should I do now? We would look at that student, think about the level of DOK that they're ready to tackle and assign a particular task to them. But you and I know that in the moment in a classroom, we don't have the time to think that all through. So my team settled for something that wasn't philosophically perfect. We would ask our students to start from the left and work to the right on the particular doc. Another thing that you'll notice is that if you read one of the individual tasks, there's no 
individual product that we ask kids to make to demonstrate mastery of the task. So in this case, it says, can you create it or can you summarize the fossil discovery that you're reading about? But it doesn't say how to summarize. It doesn't say write a paragraph for a summary. It doesn't say create a 25 word summary. Instead, it just says, can you summarize? At the bottom of the document, we give our students a list of some options, some types of products they might want to create in order to document their completion of one of the individual tasks. We call that structured voice and choice. We want to give students some options over what it is that they're going to create because we want them to be motivated. I had one student for every single task on every single tiered task card, he created a cartoon. Why? Because he was motivated to do that, right? He was into drawing and art. That's how he expressed himself the best. I need students to be motivated and interested in the tasks that they're completing on a tiered task card because remember, they're completing this work largely independently. They finished something before all of their peers. And so if they've finished early and they're going to turn to the tiered task card, I need them to be motivated to complete the tasks that are on the card. And if I can create motivation by giving them some choice over the product that they make, well, that's a win for me. So far, what do you think of tiered task cards as an activity? Is this something that you would try to create? Remember, I was trying to give my students some leveled work to complete. If they had time in class, when they finished something up, but we were still working on another task in class. How do you feel about this idea of a tiered task card from the get-go? Now, odds are some of you said inside of your minds, hey, good idea, but man, I don't have time to create all these tasks. That's going to take me forever. How do you create these tasks without consuming all of your planning time, Bill? That's a super interesting question and I understand where it comes from. Remember, I'm a career classroom educator taught for 29 years. I realize we don't have very much time for planning. However, I would tell you that once you've created your tasks, remember you're gonna use this tiered task card for multiple years. So I don't really see it as new additional planning time. I see it as an investment of time. It's front-loaded time. Once I've made the doc, I'll be able to use it again. For me, that was enough to be willing to invest in creating the tier task card. Knowing that I would use it again made the time investment worthwhile. But if that's not enough for you, if you're still a little concerned about how much time it's going to take to create this particular tool, let me show you my friend ChatGPT because it can help you. ChatGPT is an AI chatbot. If you want to know more about ChatGPT, I made a video about it, so go check out 10 Minute Team Tips. Find the video about ChatGPT. It can tell you more about how this works. But for this particular video, I want you to see that it really can help you to create tasks that are leveled by DOK. Let me show you a quick example. Let's say I'm a third grade teacher. I, I'm gonna say I am a third grade teacher. I am teaching rounding. Please give me four tasks leveled by DOK that third graders can complete to learn about rounding. Right from the get-go that has value. ChatGPT is now going in and it's thinking about the four levels of DOK and it's giving you some suggested tasks that students can complete. That's kind of neat all by itself. But ChatGPT can help you in other ways too. Watch this. I was an eighth grade science teacher. I can say, can you write a five paragraph high interest passage for eighth grade students to learn about fossils. And ChatGPT is going to go do that right away. So now it's generating that external source of content for me. 
Remember how I said that a tiered task card has to have something for students to explore? Well, they can explore this reading passage. This could be the high interest um, uh, source that kids explore. And then what am I going to say next? Can you generate four tasks leveled by DOK for this passage? And of course, ChatGPT is going to go in and say, absolutely, here they are. Here's four tasks leveled by DOK that are connected to this particular passage. Now, are these tasks any good? I, I mean, I don't know. I need to go and explore them, right? But what I do know is they're created. They're a starting point. That's going to give me ideas as a teacher. So even if they aren't perfect, I can certainly revise them. And revising something is easier than creating new content all on your own. Here's another wild thing that you can do. Let's say that I really liked this particular current event, right? It's about dinosaur fossils. It's a very current event. I'm going to go in and I'm going to copy this content. I'm literally just going in and copying the text from the current event. So I'm going to go and just get rid of this other stuff that I accidentally copied down at the bottom. Okay. I'm going to right click and copy. Now I'm going to go back into ChatGPT and I'm going to say, can you create four tasks leveled by DOK for eighth graders to complete based on this reading passage? And I'm going to literally paste the text from that article. Right, so all I did was just right click, copy and paste. That's the text from the current event that I found. And when I click the magic go button, it's gonna read the article and then it's going to create four tasks level by DOK based on the article that I just found. Do you see how useful that is to me as a teacher? So now, I can take the article that I just discovered and link it here. And if the tasks created by ChatGPT for that article are any good, right? I need to read them. I need to review them. I need to reflect on them. But if they're any good, I'm just going to paste them right here. Now creating a tiered task card with ChatGPT as my thought partner has become a whole heck of a lot easier, hasn't it? Why is it worth making tiered task cards? Well, because you can give leveled tasks to your students. You could use this like my team does as a turn to task, something that kids turn to when they need additional work in class. You could also make these stations in your regular classroom for all students to complete. Either way, the value of having leveled tasks has is super important to classroom teachers who are trying to differentiate. And if ChatGPT can make it possible to create that in seconds, man, I'm willing to take it for a spin. How about you? All right. Hope this helped. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so that you can see new 10-minute team tips as I post them in the future. Thanks for coming.